Edward. In the shower, Pop. Two minutes. Hurry up. Mayor? Yes. My name is Lindenberger, Rudolph Lindenberger. I called you earlier today. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I was tied up. We lit ourselves in, sir. The uh, door was open. Oh. Uh, this is my personal assistant, Mr. Blake. How do you do? Please sit down, will you? Professor Mayer, if what I've been reading in the newspapers is only 10% correct, you are a very important man. I'll go so far as to say the most important man alive today. And I certainly hope, Mr. Lindenberger, that what you've been reading in the newspapers isn't even 10% true. No, yeah, but we think it is. I guess I don't have to tell you, Professor, that uh, I'm one of the richest and most powerful men in the whole world. The organization of which I'm the head, Development and Investments Incorporated, controls hundreds of subsidiaries throughout the world, worth several billion dollars. That makes the two of us a pretty good team, Professor. I uh, don't think I quite follow this conversation. We have one thing in common, you and I, Professor. One mighty important thing. Uh -huh. We are both Americans, citizens of the United States. Of course. Oh, my son, Edward. Uh, oh, Professor, I, I'm not going to ask you to tell me how much truth there uh, is in the newspaper stories, because I realize that as a scientist and a man of integrity, you're not in a position to answer such a question at this moment. But I am going to assume that what I've been reading is basically true and that the Earth right now is under surveillance from a very advanced race of people from outer space. If this is true, Professor, I don't need to tell you the value of the remarkable scientific and technological knowledge which these people must possess. I simply put it to you as one loyal American to another, that it is our sacred duty to ensure that whatever special scientific and technical know-how these people may have shall be made available to our country. If your assumption is correct, sir, then the special knowledge possessed by these people would be made available to the whole world through the United Nations organization. Oh, surely, oh, surely. Well, then, Mr. Lindenberg. Don't misunderstand me, Professor. I respect your internationalist principles, but I put it to you that these principles are not in the interest of our country. This is a highly competitive world. Well, you're Edward, aren't you? Yeah. Blake. To special for our own country, I say that it is our safety as to require that I guess you know quite a bit about this uh, space business from your dad. No? No. You don't uh, help him at all? My pop's a professor of mathematical physics. I'm in high school. How do you figure I could help him? With his homework? <laughs> oh, hardly that, of course. But I guess he wouldn't take you to Australia with him without uh, some good reason. <laughs> oh, sure. Mom and I talked him into it. How do you know I'm going? <laughs> you know, I would have thought that you would have been interested to find out all you could about socialists. Why, I thought all red-blooded American boys were interested in space travel and all that stuff. Well, sir, you seem to be. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> well, uh... Well, thanks. It's been nice talking to you. I'll, I'll see you soon. Oh, really? Yes. Yes, I think so. I simply am not in a... I simply am not in a position to do business, Mr. Lindenberger. And besides, I still do not understand all the implications of your offer. You are a man of science, Professor, and research has taught you patience. I am a businessman and deal in persistence. They're pretty much the same thing, so I think you'll understand me, because I intend to put my case again. No time, sir. I leave for Australia in the morning. But when I Forgive put my case... Forgive me for betraying a, a little unscientific impatience. Oh, not at all. You've been most indulgent. It remains only for me to prove my persistence. What flight do you leave by? 6.45 a.m. Good trip. Uh, we'll see ourselves out. Thank you for coming. Well, what do you make of him, Pop? You figure he's on the level? According to his lights, I guess. He sees himself as a patriot, working in the interests of his country. Oh, yeah? Well, 
Well, what's your idea? Well, there's more to it than that. Mr. Rudolph Lindenberger II is a businessman. He's also an American. First he's a businessman, then he's an American. In that order. You'll be telling me next he's a crook. Could be. <laughs> You've been watching too much television. Pop. Pop, you know what your trouble is? You tell me. You're an egghead. You're out of this world. They must be mad. It's all this news in the papers about an invasion. Well, they never invade. Anyway, how could they when there's only 300 of them? Suppose they've got a secret weapon. What? Adam's people? Oh, not like us, you know. They're civilized. Look, if there's only 300 of them and about 3,000 million of us, they must have something up their sleeves or this new social wouldn't act so tough. I suppose Peter must have gone away in the ship. Well, they must have wanted him up there, otherwise the pilot wouldn't let him go. Well, this new social may have something to do with it. If they deposed the old Socian, because she wouldn't take a tough line about landing on Earth, well, the new Socian might have a different policy. this Questions is this? Is this Foster is this voice draft? It does it. Yes, I'm up. The Sama. Is Peter and Mrs. Verasna K. Tuscan socials? Please. Why have you brought me here? Not on us, Alexis! He 
Peter Cannon. When I give order to bring you here, I do not know who is coming. I cannot see who you are. It is very dark on Earth planet. But you're not the Socian, are you? She is. You must understand. I am not Socian now. My Peter does decide they want new Socian because they do not agree with me. In she Masalus and Lesbian. Masalus Astiantis. Chu Elmos. Sasa Socian. Masalus show Almas. I will tell you, Peter, of what has happened. At last, after many, many centuries of wandering, we find a planet to live on. Our computer machines have given us specific information which shows us we cannot find another planet like your Earth planet. My people do not want to perish, but if they must, they like better to perish here, on your Earth planet. I do not agree with this, but you understand, Peter. I am not Socian now. Here is Socian. What you mean is that you're determined to land on the Earth? Yes. I don't understand. I mean, what do you do? I'm all in favor of you coming to live on the Earth. So are lots of other people. Professor Mayer, for instance, but... I'll suppose... Just suppose that everybody gets together on Earth and says you can't come. What do you do? What can you do? So much touch. My people have a plan. To invade the Earth, you mean? But you have no weapons. We have... One weapon. One weapon only. And you lose him. What do you want me to do? To go back home and tell the people on Earth about this? No, no. Oh, you will stay here. On Earth are living now since and Verossa. They keep them there. We keep you here. Why? Mama says he has the last us. Ush, touch it! He say, we keep you here as hostile. I suspect you know a whole lot about these uh, space people the newspapers are talking about. No. Oh, come now. <laughs> you must have talked with your father about them. Maybe. Is it true the professor has actually been out to see these people up there in space somewhere? I wasn't with him on that trip. I uh, wouldn't know. I should have thought you'd be interested to find out as much as you could. After all, he is your father. Oh, sure. Say, why does Mr. Lindenberger want to see Dad? How should I know? Didn't you say you were his confidential secretary? When I learned you were flying to Sydney, I bought all the remaining seats so that uh, you and I could talk oh, thank you. without fear of interruption. That's how important I think this thing is, Professor. I'm asking you, sir, as a loyal American, to help me secure these people and their scientific knowledge for our own country. What you're asking is impossible, Mr. Lindenberger. To me, nothing is impossible, Professor Mayer. Nothing. Look at today's headlines. American public opinion is reacting strongly against these people already. I warned you this would happen. It will be the same story in every country of the world. You, as a scientist, don't want to see these people sent away, do you? No. No, we've been through this before. You'll know my attitude. Too. Mayor, please. I am adamant, sir. Let's leave it this way, then. Don't leave it too late coming to me for help. I'll be of more practical use to you than the United Nations. Those guys can talk a lot. They don't do much. I act first and talk about it afterwards. If 
you want these people to land on the earth, remember, my firm can fix it. Yes, well, I'll um, bear in mind what you've said, Mr. Lindenberger. Oh, oh, by the way, mm. uh, these two emissaries uh, mentioned in the paper, yeah. uh, where are they right now? Well, if my instructions were carried out, they'll be in Sydney, under heavy police protection. About. We can't do anything until Professor Mayer arrives. How long now before the plane gets in? In about two hours, I think. Do you think Colonel Nash will move us as soon as Professor Mayer gets here? He may wait until after dark. We have a better chance of getting away then without those photographers and reporters following us. I wonder where we're going. He's got something lined up, but he won't talk. We just have to wait for Professor Mayer. <laughs> Welcome back to Sydney, Professor Mayer. Thanks, Walsh. I hadn't expected a reception like this. Wilson! Oh, this is my son, Edwin. Hi, sir. Uh, if I'd known things were going to be like this over here, I wouldn't have brought it. <laughs> well, we're glad you did. Come this way, will you? Oh, gee, this is Bernie. This is Edward. Edward Mayer. Hi. Hello. Hello, Hello Bernie. Professor. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hello, Colonel. Nash here. Yeah. Get things moving at midnight. Right? Good. Get your arrangements ready, Sergeant. Midnight is planned. We're uh, clearing out at midnight. Mm -hmm. This will give you time to pack a few essentials, get something to eat, and generally prepare yourself for a moderately long journey by car. Oh, is it permitted to inquire where you're taking them all? Well, there's no reason why you shouldn't know now. We're going out west, to Parks. That doesn't mean a thing to me, should it? It should. There's a large research station there. Radio astronomy. Oh, sure, the radio telescope. That's right. And that's where we'll be staying. Unfortunately, I haven't seen the actual accommodation, but uh, they tell me it's comfortable. Well, how long do you intend to keep the kids there? <laughs> that I can't tell you because I don't know. I don't suppose anyone would care to predict the end of this affair. Why are we staying at the radio telescope? The telescope is to be adapted to the purpose of communicating directly with this place, Sashunas. We particularly want Professor Mayer there, and your two children must be there as well. Mm -hmm. They're the only people on Earth who have actually visited the place and met the leaders. And Adam and Barossa? Naturally, they'll be coming. <clears throat> what about those, um, those news hounds outside? Will they know about this? Of course, they'll uh, probably follow us, I guess. Mm. They'll follow us, all right. But whether they'll still be following us when we reach parks is another question. Of course, you understand that all this is very confidential. If those fellows out there did find out where we were going, it would be a very bad show indeed all round. Where's Adam right now? Uh, and the other guy, what's his name, Barossa? They spent the night in a small cottage at the bottom of the garden under heavy protection, as you ordered. Oh, good. Well, when it's convenient, I'd like to talk to him. Yes, the sergeant can arrange that. His men are looking after them. That okay by you, sergeant? Yes, of course. I'd like a few words with them myself. I'll see you out. Good. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, you there, Peterson? Come in, Sergeant. Sit down, Sergeant. No, I just came simply to tell you that. Sit you... down, Sergeant. Over here.
You all right? Listen, what's going on here? This is what I said. What's the matter with them? Who is this? Oh, this is Edward Mayer, Professor Mayer's son. Edward, this is Adam. Oh, hi. <laughs> What's the matter with those guys? Never mind. This is a serious matter. We are going away. Going away? Does Colonel Nash know? No. You mean you're escaping? But why, Adam? Because here we are prisoners, just as before. I do not trust this man, Nash. Why does he have policemen guarding at the door? If they do this always with Varasa and me, will they not also want to do the same with all my people when they come to live here on the Earth planet? But, Adam, you don't understand. This I do understand. I must be free. Free to act, free to help my people. You three will stay here until we are gone. Bernie and Jean, you of all people on the Earth are our true friends. This I know. But, Edward, I am not sure. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it at all. <laughs> Something screwy going on here. Edward, wait. You will stay here. I will ask you some questions. And you will answer. Crying. Crying. 